some of our favorite words ever spoken. I want to give a special <laughs> shout out to the two guests that have joined us from Stalls. Of course, ladies first, Kelly Walters, who is in Overland, Kansas. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. None of this would work without you. You know that, right? Oh, stop it. You're, you're too nice. You're too sweet. <laughs> I'm not being sweet. I'm telling the truth. That's right. Dane, Dane, uh, listen, Dane, first of all, people keep screwing up your last name. I've been saying Dane Clement for as long as I've known you. Is that right or am I wrong? No, nope, that's it. Unless okay. you're French and you call it Clément. Clément? <laughs> no, nope, I'm not French. That, I'm gonna that's go my Dane. family. That's what they say. So it's well, all Dane, good. Dane, we're so <laughs> thrilled that you're here. You are both rock stars. And uh, well, Dane, seriously, this has been fun because we've had a lot of back and forth before yeah, yeah. trying to get all these files prepped and crazy ideas and your abilities and your skills. And so, so glad that you're able to dedicate some time and grateful to Stalls to put you on loan to come join our webinar. And so truly, truly, we are thankful and we have special guests. Of course, we have our own team, Terry Combs, the veteran seasoned expert. We call him the uh, industry icon. Um, Terry, how are you today, my friend? I am great, Jay. Ready to ready to rock over here. We're awesome. uh, everything's being set up behind me, so Roy's over there doing uh, the real work, and uh, I'm just gonna watch him. Very cool. I love it, and thank you. Roy is working back there. So while um, if you could remind Roy, he could maybe put on mute or oh, there you go. Terry's on mute. That'll work. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna turn it over to Dane. If you're not if you're not ready for it, Dane, now's the time to get ready because. We, uh, we wanted to, but let me set the stage just a little bit. Um, the whole idea here was to figure out how we could um, create a better look, a better feel uh, for direct to film transfers. We get a lot of feedback that they feel crunchy or they feel plasticky or it feels like paper from some people. And let's be honest, other people love it. They just love them. There's no pushback. I think that sometimes we're our own um, critics and we kind of struggle with what we're used to and anything that's new that changes is different and therefore we're slow to adopt or slow to like it. And, and you've got three old school screen printing dudes on this with you here, Kelly. So, you know, we're kind of used to the way things look and feel. But um, Dane, you know, we've been trying to figure this out for, for, we've been talking about it for about a year. We've been trying to figure it out for a couple of months now. And I think you kind of cracked the code on how important, once again, how important the artwork and the graphics are in this process. So today, here's what we're gonna do if you didn't figure it out, kids. We're gonna go from artwork to printing the file to pressing the file, and we're doing this in three different locations. So if we seem a bit harried and a little bit pressured, it's because we had a lot going on this morning, but it all came together with minutes <laughs> to spare, right, Dane? I don't know about minutes, kind of like seconds, but it's all right. <laughs> dude i'm turning it over to you you're the star of our show let's talk about artwork let's talk about illustrator let's show these files and, and you guide us through you've got the next 30 to 35 minutes my friend all right so let me correct what you just said we're not going to talk about illustrator today no nope. today is photoshop i said artwork right. did i say illustrator you I'm said sorry. illustrator yeah, okay, okay no ai all right, I photoshop you. thank you i, I need all the correction i can get <laughs> all right so um yeah so uh welcome everybody this is going to be fun right um what I'm going to do today first is uh, we're going to talk about um, how to create halftones for DTF, right? Because you can't um, print faded edges with DTF technologies. It doesn't work. So let me just do this, right? So here's here's an image. I'm going to hide my ugly fade there. See that? You see it? Yep, I see right? it. See all that Water white polo. mush stuff all that's, around that's, it? That's it's horrible. Swimmer. That's the original soft edge file that's what happens when you just take an image that's got a soft edge and you print it right and then this is where is it i'm gonna find it i'm gonna find it this is what it looks like uh an image would look like when it's got a half tone on it can, can you see the half tone? oh yeah i can see the right? side it's, it, it's right so soft. that's how we fix it or we can do it like this one and we could put it inside a shape right so we don't really we're not printing half tones we're printing uh, a soft edge image, right? But it's inside of a water splotchy shape, whatever that sort of thing, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do half tones because to me, that's the coolest way to do it. If you can take some meat out of that material that we print on um, and let the shirt show through, it just starts to line up into a really cool piece. So uh, I me... love it. And, and Dane, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm going to jump in too because that was the essence of what we were both trying to do. 
yes, it looks cool. You and I love the look. We think it looks better. But also a, a huge intended benefit for this is that we have the potential of a softer feel and yep. we're using less ink and we're using less adhesive. Right. So it really is kind of the, it, how, I, how I phrase this because I'm such a Photoshop, I'm not even, I don't, I, I don't even use it to be honest. Sorry, sorry, Dane. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm not even a novice. I'm, I'm, an, I'm, not, I'm a non-user because, you know, you told me, Jay, just give up. But the reality there is, luckily, we have your training. And for those of you who are Photoshop fans, you're going to see what Dane's about to do. And then for those of you who are printers, you're going to see that your art department might pick up a tip or a trick or a new style that actually can save you some costs and improve the hand or the softness of the print. So Sorry, Dane, I jumped in on you, but I'm just, right. I can't help it. I'm just too excited. Get it. Hey, jump in. That's what we're here I for. I got it all out. I got it all out. It's all back to you. <laughs> all right. Ready, ready to share my screen, I think? If you give it to me. Yes, sir. How about all now? Right. Uh, I think I got it. Coming to me. Um. That is not it. That's your email, buddy. I know. Wrong screen. <laughs> this is only, you know, eight, first time I've ever done this, y'all. Well, listen, take hey, time you need, buddy. You're the hey, rock Hey, Wiz, how about this screen? Since I have two. How's that? Hello. All right. We got nothing. Looks great, don't it? I'm going to hide this. That's you people. I'm moving over right to my other screen now. Okay. So here's Photoshop. Let's do this. I'm going to head and open up. The file we're gonna do a fire department file, by the way, and here's here it is. Ooh, Ooh very cool again. All right, so let's do this. This is why am I? Hang on, I still got stuff in my way. Here we go. That's the one I'm looking for. All right, this is my image, right? This happens to be a Great Dane image. If you have a subscription or had one, you might have gotten this. So. Um, now, we picked this one because there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a, if you notice around the edge here as I zoom in, everybody can see this, right? Yes. 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 All right. You see the soft edge stuff going around here. That's where the problems come into with DTF. Now, if you got a DTG printer, you can do it all day long. No sweat, no problemo, right? Yep. But we can't do it with DTF. So looking at this image, obviously, I think it would look cool if it was on a red background, right? So let's do that just to show like a dummy up a red shirt you get the idea so um what we're going to do though is we're going to get rid of all bunch of red anyways inside the image itself up wow. in here because that will open up holes again get rid of the material and be a whole lot less ink that we got to worry about so i'm going to show you a process now this is um this process this particular process that i'm going to show you right now is pretty much dialed in pretty really really good um you should get the quality results on anything you throw at it and if we got time um, i will show another image and i'll do the same exact process with the same exact uh you know technique and in steps i should say right so mm -hmm. first thing i'm going to do is um i'm going to go ahead and select this image and that means all the faded stuff around it and the way you do that is if i hold my command key on a mac or control key on your pc and if you look over here if you can see that right uh, that's my layers right so if i hold my command or control key over the icon, this little square picture, right, of my layer, um, you see my cursor changes, right? It's got a little box that pops underneath it. When I click that, it selects everything on my uh, on that layer. If you, if you notice, my image now has marching ants going around it. All right, so this technique I'm going to show is going to use our channel. So I'm going to go to channels, which is usually tucked with the uh, layers in the paths, right? And you see this. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new channel. So I'm going to do that by the bottom of that layer. Um, you know, I didn't even realize this, um, guys. Can you can you see this sort of sort of thing? I should have changed my resolution before I started this. Yeah, okay. we can see them. They're a little small, okay. but I can if see the If it's too icons. small, yeah. All right, if it's too small and you can't see, let me know, and I can change my resolution. But uh, should have did that in the beginning. You know, again, it's the first time I've ever done this sort of thing. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to click on the new channel icon here, right? And it, and it adds it here. Now, I do want to show you this. If you do that and yours is black, right? This icon or this preview is black. I'm going to double click this. These are my channel options. And I use selected areas because, as Jay said earlier, I'm one of the old screen print guys. 
And what I like to see in my channels, I think of as a film positive. So I want to see my black data, my printable data, the stuff that is going to print in black, right? So I'm going to do that by clicking on the selected areas. Photoshop defaults as masked areas, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just hit OK. And if you notice, my foreground color over here is black. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to fill it. Uh, with black. Now, the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to hit Option Delete or Alt Backspace on your PC, and it will fill everything there uh, with black. Now, I'm going to zoom in again to show you because this is the problem stuff, right? This gray. That's our transitional areas, right? So we're going to start from black and it's going to basically fade into nothingness, which makes it a cool looking shirt. Uh, now, that's one step. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, I mean, a new channel again. Right. This time I'm going to go to my RGB channels and I'm going to select the red in this image. And I'm going to do that by going to uh, select menu and I'm going to come down the color range. And I'm going to mouse over the red here and you can see my little eyedropper tool and I'll yeah. zoom in just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to click on the red and you, you notice my fuzziness slider. Right. So all this is set to default. I don't change anything or touch anything. Uh, a lot of times, depending on what you're doing, you might want to move this um, fuzziness slider, and it's going to select the amount of data that you're selecting, but I want everything. I want way too much. All right, I'm going to grab the red, but I want all aspects in, of the red, and, and you'll see why, because I'm going to make an adjustment in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm just going to zoom out to see my whole screen, and I'm going to go back to my new channel that I just created, and again, with my black uh, foreground selected, Option uh, delete or alt backspace fills it, right? Uh, so now what I want you to do is take a look at that. So this is the first one we did. This one has solid underneath my shield. All the data that's on my layer just gets encapsulated and I put it on there. This is just the red stuff that I grabbed. And I did grab a bunch of this stuff around the outside edge here. We can see this little, my hand here, my cursor. Um, that's gray information uh, because it's got transparent pixels. So it's picking up some of that red uh, in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my levels, right? So I'm going to go to image adjustments levels and I'll get this dialog box. So what I want to do is I want to take the white side, right? This white part of this um, triangle here, and I'm going to move it in and you're going to see a whole bunch of the gray stuff start to disappear, right? So I'm just blowing it out. I'm getting rid of it because what I'm worried about is just a red and in, basically inside my image. So Something like that looks pretty good to me. So this is what I meant earlier when I said this is pretty locked in. If you just put a 2.5 inside this mid uh, slider here, the, the tones, the gray stuff, uh, and hit OK, we're, we're going to be pretty good. So looking at my image, I know you know if I go here, I'm, all my red stuff is inside that shield. You notice there is a some red and some yellow around the outer edge here, right? So we're going to capture a bunch of that stuff as well. So uh, what I want to do uh, now, though, is come over here and clean up my channel. So I'm going to turn turn these things off. And this is what I mean by cleaning it up. I want my red stuff to stay inside that shield mainly, right? But And you see, we got some stuff over here. I can print this if I wanted. I got a little bitty line here. But these are the kind of things. This is just background noise. I'm going to get rid of it because it's not necessary for the image that we're printing. Uh, you can see some here. So a couple ways to do it. I can hit my E key, which is going to give me my eraser tool. And if I, if I use my right bracket key, that's going to make my brush size larger. If I use my left bracket key, it's going to make it smaller. So I can come in here and just start erasing because I have my background set to white, right? So I can do that. I can use the eraser tool. Or if I zoom out a little bit more and I want to grab a big chunk of this, uh, I'm working on a Cintiq. Um, you could have a Wacom tablet, use a little cordless pen. So this is going to make it a little bit faster for me. I'm going to hit my L key which is going to give me my lasso tool. If you look over here on my tools uh, bar and I can just come in here and grab all this stuff here and then just hit delete. Right. So it just, it's a faster way of grabbing a bunch of stuff and getting rid of. So cleanup wise um, it works. And that's pretty much all I want to clean up because I want everything else to have that red information in it. Okay. So now we cleaned up this. What I need to do is I need to take this data and we're going to knock it out of this one. Uh, I was just going to ask you that. Okay. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Even See? I'm hanging with you. Man, you're this. still with me, Jay? This yes. is awesome news. This is awesome. All right. So the way we select that stuff on that channel, right? I'm going to hold my command key or control key in your PC and click on this little icon of the image on that layer. And I do like that. And it grabs everything. So what you see is the marching ants. It selected that stuff. Now all I got to do is go to this channel here and delete, right? 
And now what you see is okay. the red is removed from my image for the most part. I still got some gray stuff out here. And this is all the stuff that's going to be halftone here in just a minute when we uh, get to that part, which uh, we're just about are. Guess what? Guess I'm what? Gonna I'm going to duplicate my image. I usually duplicate this in the beginning. And just, I did. Just in so case? The reason or I'm because... going to duplicate is because I want to make this a grayscale, right? So. Oh, uh, I got it. This is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come over my channel, right? Always open the file and duplicate. It's the first thing you should do. Then you don't have to do it now. So I just remembered. So that's good. All right. Holding my command key again inside of this grayscale piece here. I'm going to do that. And since that one's got the red knocked out, this is going to become our grayscale halftone uh, part of this image, right? So all my marching ants are here. I'm going to go to my RGB stuff and go to my layers. And I'm going to click on a new layer here. I'm going to turn this one off. And now if you notice my foreground color is set to red, I'm just going to, you can hit the, the uh, D key for the default colors or just hit this little X, uh, this little uh, black and white uh, square right above it on the left there. So here's a new layer. We have our selected area from our channels. And now the same thing, that auto fill, that, that option delete or alt backspace is going to be your friend. That's a shortcut. Otherwise, you got to go to the fill and fill with foreground color or use your paint bucket tool or one of those things. But that's a quick, easy shortcut that you're going to use all the time. So get to know them. Uh, all right. So I'm going to deselect it right now. This is our grayscale image that we're going to work with. So now we're going to work it, uh, turn it into halftones. OK. And the reason I wanted to, to duplicate my files, because I got to change some modes to make this happen. So the first thing I'm going to do, got that layer selected. I'm going to go to my image mode. And I'm going to come down to grayscale here. And it's going to say, hey, you want to merge it or don't merge it? I don't have to merge it right now. I'm going to have to merge it in a second, though. So I'm going to hit discard any color information. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now I got a grayscale, right? Next thing, in order to get to the halftone component, I have to go to image mode. And I got to go to bitmap. And it's going to say, hey, you got to flatten these layers. I'm like, OK, right? So it just delayed it one second. So now. Here's our bitmap window. When you get this window, it won't default. If, you ever, if you've ever, if you never done this before, I want to say it's going to be on diffusion, dither as a default. I can't remember. But anyway, you want to click on that drop down and go to halftone screen. Um, and the output, uh, I should have mentioned this before, is this image is at 300 pixels per, in, per inch, right? So that's what I want my output to be because that's a high resolution file. It's good enough for me to work with. So I'm going to hit OK to that. And then I get this window. Now, this is the part where um, I'm going to just say a 30-line halftone is probably the sweet spot. Uh, these are the things that you can play with, though, right? So uh, it's going to allow you to, one, be a small enough dot to work, but be a big enough dot to hold most of the data. Now, this is a transfer. So chances are when you pull that off uh, your shirt, you will have some halftone dots that stay on the shirt, on the transfer uh, carrier sheet. Um but for the most part, that 30 line halftone. Now, when Charlie Tabley taught me how to separate black shirts in 1993, I want to say, right? And uh, we were doing 32 line halftones. So it's kind of like old school screen print, guys, all over again. Dane, you didn't have to date yourself right there, man. Hey, we, we, I'm we, proud we, of the gray, man. I, I earned every bit of it. I'm good. I am not I love worried it. about that stuff. I love it. All right. So frequency 30 lines per inch, right? That's a big enough dot. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Now, the angle, if I was going to screen print this, personally, I'd use a 61 degree angle, but I'm not printing through mesh. This is just printed from a digital printer. And a 45 degree angle is the most pleasing angle to the eye, right? That's what's used in newspapers and all that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm going to use an elliptical dot shape um, because I'm old school screen printer and I want my dot shape to be a little bit larger than a circle, right? So if I got an ellipse, it's this big. If I got a circle, it's that big. And the only difference is it's going to allow my uh transfer right to have a little bit more area on that dot to hopefully make the transfer all the way to the shirt type of thing right so yep, yep. that's why i use elliptical dots i use them for screen printing as well for the same reason one we're printing on a weaved garment when it finally said and done so um now i'm going to hit okay to that and if you take a look now when i zoom in now you can see all that stuff is turned into little elliptical dots and it lined up on in a row uh at that 45 an angle. Line yep, angle. you can see the 45 yep. yeah right so this is what we're going to start working with and knowing that i'm going to do this one more step to get this i got to go image mode and i got to go back to grayscale 
Um, otherwise, I won't be able to take it into my working document. So here it says grayscale size ratio to one. That's default. Just hit OK to that. And now we're good. All right. So now what I got to do is take this channel and bring it into my working file. So the way I do it is I'm going to grab this tab here uh, for this working file. I'm just going to drop it down. This is my channel that we're working with, right? My halftone screen. And if, I, if you notice over here, the one in the back, that's my working file. You can see it's grays. So if I go to channels, I'm going to grab my gray channel here and just bring it into this document. And the reason I like to use channels is because it will always center and line up perfectly. If you do them on layers, sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you got to hold a shift key or an alt, or an alt key, can't remember, uh, to make it centered. Uh, but sometimes you don't want it centered. You want it to be wherever it's supposed to be. So moving the channel over is, will guarantee that that happens the correct way. All right, so I'm going to get rid of these old these other two channels because that's the stuff that wouldn't have been here if I had duplicated my file initially. All right, so now what I got to do, there's my uh, my channels, my halftones. I'm going to go back to my RGB stuff, right? And I'm going to go to layers, and I'm just going to click on a new layer uh, icon here. And I'm going to come over here, and again, I'm going to hold my command key or the control key, and I'm going to select the data on that channel in my channels window like that, right? I'm going to go over here to layers. Now, what I'm doing is I'm removing the red in this image. If I was removing a green from a lizard, which I'll show you if I got time, or any color, whatever color shirt I'm going for, and the whole point of this particular image is to put it on a red shirt, um, I want to probably, don't have to, but I'm going to use that color uh, here, right? So and this is what I mean. So I, I selected the halftones. I'm going to grab my... Uh, my color picker here, my little eyedropper tool, and click on that red. You can see it in the foreground color now. So now if I, again, hit the option delete, you see how many times I use this? It's super, super handy. I'm going to do like that. And then, would, you know, what I do, I just covered everything up. It's all right. I just want to show you, right? So there's my halftones, and I turn the halftones off, and you see all the faded transparencies. And the problem with the transparencies is it's a percentage of information, right? So it's it's not a 100% coverage of anything. But when we just filled that halftone with that solid red color, we just made it little solid 100% coverage on those little halftone dots. That's going to allow us to continue to work with this guy. So I'm going to do like this. I'm just going to put it behind here. And now I'm going to select it again. Same thing, right? I'm going to hold my command key and I'm going to click on this layer because I'm in layers now. It works with layers and channels, by the way. So if I hold my command key and I click here, I'm going to select the halftones. Now I'm going to select my artwork layer and I'm going to go to select menu and I'm going to inverse it. So right now, remember uh, the way we did it is we selected the artwork in our channel with the black information, right? Our film positives. Well, right now I want to delete this information. So I got to invert that selection. So I'm going to inverse it. And then now watch when I turn this layer off here, I'm just going to hit delete on this artwork layer. Now I would recommend you could duplicate that layer just so you got a copy. Um, just because in case you mess something up, right? It's always there. You can always revert back. No big deal. But if I hit delete, then you can see it knocked out the red in my, in my layer, in my artwork. So now when I turn on this, the uh, halftone layer, right? It's going to sit in there. So now I can go ahead and fly out menu. Command E is another shortcut, but I'm going to show you here. Where is it merged down? See that? So as long as I have one layer selected here, it's going to merge down with the next layer. So uh, do like this, come over here, Command E or Control E, merge it down. So now it's on its own layer. We're ready to go. But watch this. I'm going to show you what it looks like on a red. So if you got a red shirt, let's say, put it in there. That's what it's going to look like. If you got the right red here, right? You take a look. You see some of the yellow on the blended area going out, which is mm -hmm. what we're looking for. That's yep. the stuff. Since it's in the image, we want to keep it, right? And if you notice, there's no, there's not half tone dots everywhere over the whole image, right? You might want to do that, and it's a different process slightly uh, if you're going to be a white toner printing, but we're not talking about that today. So, but take a look here on the R, you can see it's solid coverage inside there, and everything else is textured. We got a, um, you know, like a distress pattern over the whole thing. So the whole part of this image is it's very distressed, very cool. And when I turn off the red here, you can see that that is a wide open uh, yeah. transfer, right? It makes That's, a huge difference. Right. That is what this transfer is. You can see all the open holes in there for that shirt to show through. 
And that's the what we're trying to do here. That's the beautiful part. Now, I will tell you this. We're almost done. Um, there is one more step that I would absolutely recommend doing. It's can, depending on the image. Um, sometimes you don't have to do it at all. Sometimes you have to do it. Uh, and it might take anywhere from five to 15 minutes, right? Depend. This one would take a full 15 minutes because there's a lot of fades going on around a whole entire piece. If you notice, all this stuff fades down to nothingness. And this is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to uh, make a new layer and I'm going to go grab my uh, elliptical marquee tool. And I'm going to zoom in because I want to show you these little bitty dots. See this stuff here? Can you see that? Yeah, now I can. Yes. Right. They're really, really small. And if we don't get rid of it, uh, adhesive could be could uh, could grab onto that on our transfer. The white pixels for the you know the, your uh, underbase or your, your overlay uh, white ink uh, could be on there, and it can show us some white fuzzy lines around the outside. The yeah, we call those sometimes we call those little halos where yeah there's yeah. just like and you, just there's just enough data that that right white that? gets picked. Yep. Okay, that's the stuff I want to get rid of. I don't want that white. I don't want the white stuff there, right? So in order to fix it, like I said, five to 15 minute fix. This one, I'm not gonna do the whole thing just to save us some time here, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. So this is my super high tech uh, trick. Super I mean, I, went, I did trick. graduate from MIT, by the way. You Terry, know. Terry and I are writing this down, super high tech. <laughs> super high tech, watch this. This is awesome. So I'm gonna, I got my elliptical tool here and I'm gonna click, hold my shift key, I'm gonna drag. See the little thing that, this, that got my width and my height, right? Yep. So I'm going to go to point zero, 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 two. Boom, stop. Watch. I'm going to fill it with bright lime green. I'm on that new layer and I'm going to hit option. What am I going to do? I fill it with a color. Option, delete, or alt, backspace. Again, see that? All right. So now I'm going to hit my V key, which is going to give me my move tool. And I can move this little dot around. See that? This dot is probably the smallest I want to to do as far as halftone wise. Now watch this. When I zoom out, the whole thing uh, can't even see it. It's right here. I mean, it's tiny, 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 right? So what you want to do is zoom in. <laughs> Obviously, if you've got eyes like mine and need these kind of things, filter them <laughs> so I can see stuff. Uh, you want to, and you don't have to get every single dot, but it's good to spend, a, like I said, a few minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on my artwork layer here. And if I hit my E key, it gives me my eraser tool, right? Which is over there. I got a hard edge eraser, which you can see at the top of my screen here. And I'm going to grab my Cintiq thing here, my little eraser, and I'm going to make left bracket keys going to make it a little bit smaller. And what I want to do is anything that's any dots that are smaller than that, I want to kind of get rid of, right? So I can see like this row right here is probably gone. I'm just going to, and if you notice, I'm just sort of doing it with the rows. We're probably going to do this and like this. And anywhere is where the, you know, I'm going to kind of revisit. So now the reason I kind of chunked in there is one, this is probably still not perfect, but it's close enough. I'm probably good with those dots, right? So I'm good. Um, select my artwork again. If I hit my L key, and I like my shortcuts, by the way, but that's my lasso tool. Watch. I hit L and see my lasso tool get selected. So now, again, just like I did before, I can go all the way around a bunch of this stuff right through my little cavity that I created and I can delete all those dots all at one shot right so click back on my uh, layer there my move my v from my move tool and go back to my artwork layer and I got my eraser tool selected again and just sort of get rid of any dots that are too small now again this one is kind of a it's a uh Problem file because it has a lot, but again, the mo takes 15 minutes and then you're done. If you're going to print this as transfers in multiple times and that sort of thing, you spend yeah. the effort one time it. on your artwork and then you can print a million of them. Doesn't matter after that point because you're not doing it again, right? It's already done. Uh, and you know, can you shut, can you take shortcuts and not do it? Uh, yeah, you can. And you're going to get those little white, snotty looking halos, which you know, none of us like. So uh, this is um, one of those things. Now, what you could do, if you don't want to use a point, uh, zero 0.02 dot, you can you know, find whatever works for your scenario, your shop, right, right. your technique, your printer, and all that sort of thing, right? So um, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of go back to my artwork layer. It might help when you're wondering why stuff's not erasing. 
All right. So, uh, yeah. Well, so what happens here, Dane, is I have a whole new respect for your skill set, your ability, and your patience because I know that you did this now. I know that you did this in preparation for all of these files that we've been working on for a week. So, uh, but I get it and I can see it in the print. And I also right. saw it before you did this yep. with the original file. And when you peel off that transfer and you see that there's still ink in these super tiny little dots yep. that, that the, the adhesive or the white base couldn't pick up. So I, yeah. this is starting to really make sense to me. I Absolutely. It. And that's, and look, like I said, I don't have to keep going, but you, you no, no, but now we get the it. rest. And, and yep. it, this one did take about 15 minutes because of it's, it's so involved and it's so much half tones going on all over the place. Watch if I zoom in over here, for instance, you can see, like these little bitty random dots, those things, they may or may not actually stay on the carrier sheet, but those are the things that you don't really know until you print it, right? So why print it and waste them if they're going to be there, right? Waste your print. A um, couple minutes in the front end and you don't have to do it. So I would erase, you know, all these little bitty dots and kind of get rid of it. And again, uh, it's just it's just a better way to do the art. And of course, I'm the art guy. I'm not the production guy. Um, I'm going to, I want my artwork to look as good as it can possibly be before we print anything. I don't care what we're printing, what kind of decorated with DTG or what doesn't matter. I want it to work to look as good as it can look. And then we decide how we're going to decorate and what we're going to do. So I love that. I love that. And I want Terry to turn his mic on for a second because he is the production guy. You want me to get out of here? Nope. Just, nope. I want nope. you guys, to, I just want, I want Terry to comment on that. I mean, Terry, can you see the time that Dane's taking is actually going to save time in production. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Take save time in production. And, you know, one of the things that, that we've talked about early on here is how can we get that better feel uh, with the DTF print and, and all, everything that Dane has done here is, is gone in that direction. And so not only is it going to be better production wise, but the end user, our customer is going to, going to appreciate this, uh, this much more as well. Yeah, Dane, that, that was awesome. I, I want to give it back to you. I didn't want to cut you off. If you've got another minute or two or three, please. If, take I, got, if I got another minute, I can run a whole different image and just kind of run through the motions and, and show one more time just to kind of. You, you got two minutes. You're on the clock. Let's see it. <laughs> I don't, got don't, this. Now, take yourself out of trainer mode and just kind of go through it. And I think we'll see the same thing, but we'll see it a little quicker. Got it. All right. So here's another image, right? And first thing. Duplicate it this time right up <laughs> right up front, and then we're good to go. So command click on my icon to select it, go to my channels, click a new one, fill it with black. Look at that big old solid chunk, right? So now we're gonna put this guy on a green shirt. So if I go to uh, select menu, right? Do color range again. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna get a green, something like that, all the way maxed out at 200. Um, there it is, new channel again. And then as long as my foreground color is black, I could do it like this. And you see some stuff here in the inside the, uh, the stick or whatever. I want to get rid of that. Pull up my levels, image adjustment levels, by the way. Shortcuts are always good. Uh, I'm going to kind of squeeze them over till those things disappear. Uh, right here, I'm going to put in, put in 2.5 in my, as my midtone. I'm going to do that. Now it's cleaned up. So command click on my icon there. Select my other channel. Delete it out of it. So that is all that data is coming out of this image uh, as we move forward, right? So I'm going to select it again, go to my layers, new layer, and I'm going to fill it with black, right? Like this, turn off my, uh, my artwork layer, and this is going to become my grayscale, right? So image mode, grayscale, and I'm going to not merge it, only to merge it later. And then I'm going to go to mode, go to bitmap, right? Hit OK. Uh, discard the other channels. Yeah, here we go. Half tone. I'm going to leave it at 30 by 45. Again, you guys, if you want to work with a smaller dot to try to get like screen printing, you can do it. 40, 45 max. Anything more than that is going to be mush. And I think it might still be mush at 45. So uh, you might like again, 30, 35, I think is, is the best sweet spot there. So you can hit OK. There it is. Go back to grayscale, right? Yep, got to hit that as a default. I am going to move my Zoom tools thing because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, grab my uh, my tab here, drop it down, go to my channels, drag over my channel. All right, there it is. I'm going to make a selection, go to layers, 
new layer and uh, I'll just turn this off and I'm gonna um, actually I'm gonna leave it on and I'm gonna come in with my eyedropper tool I'm gonna get the green that I'm looking for and I'm gonna fill it with green now it's going on a green shirt that's why I filled it with green. Just if there's any kind of issues with printing green data, it's going to just blend in the shirt that much better, right? So that's my halftones, as you, as you can see here. Um, it's all in there. And notice this one doesn't have any super soft fades around the outside, so it's super easy. Uh, I'm going to put that underneath. And now I'm going to select it again, go to my layer here. And I didn't duplicate my layer. I always do, by the way, just to have it, just in case. And I will uh, not delete. I already did that. I got to invert. Whoops, select, invert. See, make mistakes. Even me, wow. even me. Wow. Like, what? All the time. <laughs> Just saying. All right. So now we want that green shirt, right? Find that um, green. Yep. Fill it in there. There we go. So look at that. Super cool. Way yeah, open. See, Look all the openness. With the, with the green shirt, out, exactly. You can see all of the white showing through, which would be the, yep. the garment color. So there you go. I think it's cool. And I know awesome. it works. Awesome. Dane, wow. That was a lot, uh, but it was so <laughs> worth it. Appreciate you doing that second chance because it kind of helps to kind of see you go yeah, through follow the flow it through. one time. Right, right, right. I definitely know what I'm getting you for, for the holidays. Um, we're going to print out a shirt that says, I like my shortcut keys. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'll wear it today. Come on, man. So Hurry up. I, I might have to coordinate with Kelly so that we can maybe do something fancy, you know, something reflective, some something puffy <laughs> with some texture. Um, layers, channels, mush, command keys. Dane, nah, that's you my favorite. Are awesome. And we appreciate right. it. And Thank we you. needed to see all of that. And I just want people to see um, we have been going back and forth. This was the original file. And it's um, amazing. The graphic itself is amazing. However, in a DTF transfer, as we know, even with the right adhesive, even with the right carrier sheets, and we've been playing with hot peel right now, and it seems to be, you know, there's some tricks and there's some secondary presses that you can do, and all, everybody's trying to figure this out right now. But when you see what Dane did, and then you get to the red, and you can really see the, the, the color showing through, had I never seen that white t-shirt, I would be so in love with this. And I am in love with it anyway. I don't have a problem with between the two at all. And the feel is dramatically softer. And I know you can't feel it through the Zoom meeting, but it truly is dramatically softer. So Dane, take a feel right there. Go, buddy. Okay. So having said all that, we got the artwork done. We had the master create this for us. We have these files. And believe me, Dane knows we went from as low as 10 LPI with these ginormous dots and we went all the way up to 45 and we were trying to find that sweet spot. So I'm, I'm surrounded with film laying over here in my office um, trying to get there, but, but it wouldn't happen if we didn't take care of all that stuff up front. So again, artwork is essential. Experiment, test, practice, make some mistakes. This is what's going to make you a better decorator in the first place. And then you're also going to be able to have an advantage in the marketplace because you'll have that flexibility. When others say no, you're going to be like, no, I, I think I've got something in my bag of tricks and here's what we're going to do. So now I'm going to kick it over to Terry. Terry, we're, we're lucky that we have the Equipment Zones new EasyJet Pro. It's our, our DTF printing system. It's right behind you. Ta-da. Nice man so, of white. Yeah, nice. So Terry, I'm going to kick it over to you. What, what would you like to tell us a little bit about this printer and, and the essentialness of that? Obviously, it's a key piece of the puzzle. Well, absolutely. And uh, and uh, the UPS guy now is gone who was standing next to me trying to hand me a package. Uh, <laughs> so Science live later. broadcasting, everyone. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, um, Jay, just a, a few years ago, no one had ever heard of DTF transfers, direct to film transfers. And, and uh, I, have, I have a confession, uh, you know, I do a podcast, Two Regular Guys, and, and my, my, co-host uh, Aaron Montgomery about two and a half three years ago he sent me a message and he goes hey hey Terry you know uh, you're the guy w what do you know about DTF transfers and I'm like well uh what is it <laughs> and uh, so uh, you know I and and it so it, it took a little while for uh, for us to get uh, to get rolling with it but it came on like a storm as you as you know and you know when I first saw it I thought is 
this going to be another white toner because white toner is going to take over the world and obviously that didn't happen and and uh but but i think we um I think this has progressed uh, really quickly, though, because we learned a lot of lessons 19, 20 years ago when DTG came about. You know, there were it was a it was a painful existence to be a DTG printer 20 years ago, you know, and, uh, and, Terry, 18, and Terry, you've got the scars uh, to show it, don't you? I do. I do. Uh, you know, Jay, you and I met while I worked at U.S. Screen uh, here in, in Tempe and and we introduced the T-Jet and uh, you were across the way uh, selling artwork. And uh, so uh, but I think that the DTG or DTF has progressed very quickly because of all those lessons we learned. And and, and Jay, here at Equipment Zone, we, we had a leg up because before these DTF printers, we were already printing DTF transfers on the Epson F2100, back to the F2000, uh, on the new uh, 2270 when it comes out this fall. So we already had a really good handle on how to do DTF transfers. But uh, specifically behind me is the EasyJet Pro 24. It's a totally purpose-built machine, which means that you've got the printer, you've got the powder shaker, you've got the dryer. So add to that our own ink system, add to that the CadLink RIP. And, and a lot of folks out there, especially screen printers, know CadLink because CadLink invented RIP software for screen printers two decades ago. And, uh, and so they really understand color management, that sort of thing. So that complete system, and I didn't mention adhesive powder, so that, that complete system makes this a, a really um, a, a really complete package for outputting your uh, transfers. So uh, the 24 inch, by the way, it's a it's a commercial production machine, 100 square feet per hour. That's a lot of a lot of pieces going through. Now, uh, Roy's going to show us a close up over here uh, of the machine, but but the powder. The, the the powder shaker dryer is um it's not small <laughs> it weighs almost 800 pounds uh you and myself and roy know that for a fact because we're the ones who brought that that in <laughs> it's on caster so once you get it on the ground you can move it anywhere but uh, uh you do need double doors or an overhead door and and let me answer the question that we get asked almost every day what can I take off of it to fit it through my door? Nothing. It, <laughs> you need double doors door to, to pass it through. But um, that's why we have now introduced a 17-inch machine. So 17-inch wide film, and it's the EasyJet Pro 17. And uh, that will fit through a 36-inch door. And so uh, we've had people waiting and waiting to be able to get that machine uh, so they can get it into their facility. And, you know, you, you lose a few inches, but uh, it, it is still a production machine. We're still working on our our square foot uh, testing, that sort of thing. Uh, all that testing is going on back in back in New Jersey. What you're seeing here is the Tempe, Arizona showroom that we're pretty proud of that Jay and myself and Roy and a couple of other folks are working in. And um, I think we're going to uh, jump to Roy here in just a minute. Uh, for anybody out there that is already a customer of Equipment Zone, you already know Roy. Uh, Roy is a senior technician with, uh, with Equipment Zone. Uh, I don't think anybody in the country knows more about DTF printing than Roy does. And uh, he, he takes a lot of pride in testing and and uh, getting under that machine and inside of that machine uh, to make it work and get those really, really great transfers. So, uh, Jay, are we, do you have more questions for me? Or are we ready to to jump to Roy? Yeah, why don't I just have a couple more questions for you thinking sure. about the, the printer itself. I mean, we've, we've had this printer now for about how long? What's the total time that we've been working with? We introduced it last October at Printing United Alliance. And uh, and we, as you well know, we're less than two months away from that again. So about 10 months ago, we introduced it. Uh, lots of machines out there in the field. 
Uh, we've uh, we've made certain certainly made improvements on it. When you know, Jay, when we bring these machines in, and I'm I'm saying we very broadly because they go into New Jersey, not here. Uh, but there's a there's a multi step process where every machine is set up, every machine is tested. We have our own secret sauce improvements that we make on these machines as they come through the doors. So, uh, you know, and we do have inventory of these machines. Uh, right now, it takes about two weeks to get them through the process just the sheer backlog of, of orders we have and and all the things that we do to get them uh, ready to go out the door but uh gosh you know uh, i had um, i have a customer in uh, in pittsburgh who just recently said to me gosh jerry man i love this machine you know i had a contract to print three thousand rally towels for taylor swift and he said they were a huge, huge hit. And uh, they were, uh, they, and you, of course, he sent me some pictures. They looked incredible. And he did them completely with DTF on the Easy Jet Pro 24. Yeah. And they were licensed. I'm re I was going to make sure yeah, this was a legit <laughs> thing. This wasn't just a fan, you know, showing, showing up in the parking lot trying to make a buck. Right. Off of the, the they were, they were, Swift they were selling in them at the, uh, at the merch table inside the arena, not outside. <laughs> Well, let's turn it over to Roy. Maybe Roy can just give us a few of the highlights of a few features, what he likes. He, he is the guy that's using that machine often, and he's coaching, training, doing setup, probably has had the most um, involvement with the printer since we've started um, selling it, since it's been available. And so as you can see, um, Dane, it, it, I don't know about you in Louisiana, but we have a, we have a shorts policy T-shirts and shorts are acceptable in the summertime over here because when it's 105, um, we're wearing shorts, pal. So um, me too. Check out, check out those calves on Roy. Roy, <laughs> you're still on mute, so I just want to make sure that you're talking through your phone. Roy, you're still on mute. You're you're still muted. So let's make sure we can hear you. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, head back over to the. <laughs> Here we go. You can see the printer I, I, is on. It was unmuted, but there you I didn't go. Know we got you. You can hear me now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Thanks Sorry for joining that. us. Roy Huseman, uh, Equipment Zone Senior Tech. Roy, take it away, my friend. All right. Thank you so much. Anyway, as you can see, I am presently running the job <laughs> that uh, we're talking about. And uh, Dane made quite a few different samples, different screens percentages and what have you, uh, as well as the samples that Jay alluded to. So basically, as far as the machine and some of the highlights is uh, Terry had started to mention uh, that we've changed over the last few months, uh, being able to print a full roll of film without stopping, okay? Uh, jamming, getting off track within the the machine, the feed system is great. I know we all have been to uh, trade shows and the worst thing you wanna see when you walk up to a booth is the film all crinkled coming out of the back and being melted. Our machine is set up, that's why our dryer is a little bit bigger than others, is it's set up to stop and run and stop and run. So I can be sending jobs, not have to cut my film and run it all the way through to the end like some of the machines out there, once you start a job, you have to finish it and run it through. I can stop the printer, queue up another job, start printing the next one, and the heating system will cool down to where it's not going to cause an issue with the material that's in here already. Not to overcook it, overmelt the adhesive or anything of that nature. Got a great uh, shaker system, um, puts just enough on there. Uh, takes off the residual. As far as the other thing that's real important is controlling the water that comes through this system, or I should say through the DTF process. Um, that's really important. So our machine actually preheats the film, evacuating any moisture in the emulsion to allow it to pull the moisture out of the ink or the water out of the ink to start the drying process. We're also heating it again here, coming over the, the uh, front of the printer to start the ink drying process as well and continue it on. So as the machine starts and stops, 
we also have a third heater going into the shaker just to make sure if there's any moisture that is picked up on the media, it's not going to attract powder in the unprincipal area that could create little issues when you go to transfer, like dusting or anything of that nature, or putting powder where it doesn't belong on the image itself. Um, again, those are the main highlights. The other thing is, is our machine, because of the various types of customers we sell to, our machine can sit off for up to seven days, turned off, not running, and then turn it on and go through a simple startup procedure and be off and running within minutes. Uh, that's something that took us months to do. Originally, we had our machine to where, just like most of them out there, they're finicky, and you had to make sure the machine was on or you're cleaning it every day, and being able to get to the point where we can go a full seven days. This machine does not see as much action as uh, because of us being in and out uh, as our in machine in Jersey. So this machine is set weeks on end, um, you know, for months now, where I'm running it maybe once or twice a week. So if I'm only running it once a week, then it's sitting off for seven days straight. We do have a com humidity controlled environment, which is key, 40 to 50%. The temperature that we run in here is uh, typically right around 72 to 75 degrees, depending on how hot it is outside and uh, how our ACs are working. But um, anybody have any questions or you wanna interject or anything of that nature? No, I think you covered it great. Dane uh, was talking about artwork and obviously prepping those files. And, and Roy, thank you so much for helping us. We went through um, lots of feet of film to try to find kind of that sweet spot. Um, I'd, I'd love to get, you know, maybe just one or two minutes from your side of the street being in production. And I know you know your way around artwork too. What, what was the, uh, were there any insights, any takeaways, anything that you learned or saw through the process of what Dane and I were trying to accomplish? and how that printer was able to you know, showcase it well. Yeah, well, basically, as far as the file Dane was focusing on is a file that comes up quite often. Now, some of them could probably just take an, a, a screening thrown at it, but to be able to go in and uh, change the uh, color and take it out if you're going on a red shirt and being able to adjust the, the dot pattern to get something that's going to be substantial to look at and still sh show the detail. Because I know a couple of the first samples we did, some of the detail of the firemen were kind of missed in the trans, uh, I guess the translation from half tone dot to the taking the color out and all that stuff. So, you know, I think we've all learned a little bit as far as the limitations of the DTF as it fades out to the outer area of a graphic when you have screens. And uh, ultimately, Dane's done an excellent job at, uh, with his skill and knowledge to make it happen for us today. Love it. Well, thank you, Roy. Appreciate all of your help getting these files printed um, and, and having a good time. It takes a, lot, it takes a village around here at Equipment Zone. And uh, truly, I get these crazy ideas, and I just see Roy shaking his head like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, Roy, yeah. was there anything Can else? I, tell you to print these? I need them in no, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Hey, I didn't say 10 minutes. I gave you a half hour. Um, but Roy, yeah. before you go, is there any one thing that you're most impressed with? You've been around the block. You've seen a lot of digital printers. You've got a lot of experience. What, what's one of the highlights that really you love most about this uh, EasyJet Pro 24 DTF system? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I guess there's there's more than one. I mean. The fact we don't have to vent the machine is very, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, the RIP technology that we ended up with, as you alluded to before, giving us uh, some ICC profiles, but uh, being able to ha not have a venting system and filters that can pull out the pollutants, so to speak, for this uh, product line, and the ability to open up and clean when I need to. Okay, so uh, very easy to clean machine, so. Great. And it. the other thing is, is I can turn it off when I'm done printing, 
like that, and I don't have to wait for it to cool down because of the temperatures we run in the heating element. Uh, again, that reverts back to the stop and starting without having to uh, pull, let the film run all the way through. Otherwise, it's going to end up melting in the machine, which I've seen at a bunch of shows. You walk up and their printer got messed up and they're trying to focus over here. And then the melt of the film coming out of the back is, is all crinkled up and starting to melt. So uh, we've done a lot of improvements uh, with our manufacturing to get to this point and uh, definitely proud of where we're at today. I well, love it. Thank you, Roy. Appreciate that. Yeah, the, the no venting has been a big deal. The chat, by the way, is now open. Sorry for those of you who were hoping to, to, to communicate a little bit with us. I failed to turn that on. I had it on for the panelists, but I didn't have it on for everybody. Might, might be a blessing mm -hmm. in disguise because, you know, Dane was getting so nerdy and so techy. Um, I'm sure all the questions <laughs> would have been, was that, was that control D or was that control E? So I would recommend command. you go. I want a Mac. Oh, command. sorry. Command. See, <laughs> see how he is? Yeah. Um, but it is now open. Terry's yeah. going to monitor the chat. I can see a lot of questions are coming in about average costs, cost of the printer, et cetera. We want to make sure that this isn't a full-scale sales. You know, this is a, this is a training webinar, but, uh, but of course you're curious. And of course, we're going to answer your questions. So thank you for those questions in the chat. Truth be told, the star of the show is here because none of this would matter if we did not have an amazing heat press. Ta-da! Kelly, thank you for being so <laughs> calm and quiet and sitting through, you know, an hour of us old white guys blabbing on about artwork and printers. Um, I'm thrilled that you're here. We're so grateful that you could take some time with us today. Um, tell us, tell us, I turn it over to you. What should we know about Hotronics? What should we know about heat presses? What have you got in store for us? I know how creative you are. I cannot wait to see what's cooking. So we are going to talk about several different things. Um, in, in my portion of this. And the reason being is because with the heat press, there's so much that you can do. The versatility of it is really, really um, versatile, right? There's just, you can do garments, you can do accessories, you can do different locations, you can go over seams. So as, I'm gonna scoot this a little bit closer because it keeps adjusting so you can see the press actually. Um, one thing about Hotronics is it is made in the U.S. So I think that's extremely important as you are going to buy equipment. One, because life happens. You never, ever know what equipment is going to do. And it's extremely important to be able to have a team of customer service be able to talk to, uh, be able to take care of you, talk to you. And yeah, one thing I'm a big component for, your business, you maybe feel like you're working 24 hours a day. Um, but in reality, you shouldn't, right? But if you need that support, then just know our team from Hotronics is here to support you. And I guarantee you um, the Equipment Zone team is going to take care of you as well. So I want to make sure that you guys know customer service made in the USA because that's extremely important. Now, when we get down to the nitty gritty of what the heating element can do, which is really the most important part of creating that quality product is understanding what's in the heating element and that is a coil. So ours has a snake like um, pattern versus an X. And the reason being is we wanna keep no more than two inches apart from each coil to eliminate cold spots. So if you've purchased a press from other places and every once in a while, maybe you are applying at a corner of the press and you realize it just doesn't heat apply as well, maybe the center or the center overheats and the outside or around it is just not the same temperature. Make sure you take a look at actually what's inside of the press. I'm not gonna tell you to take apart your um, heat press, but just know what you are buying. I'm a firm believer in quality. And I know if you put a quality product out there, that's only going to get you returning customers, um, you know, and hopefully retain and grow your business versus somebody going, oh, this fell off. And I think it's also really important to not always blame the transfer. There's a lot of different components. There could be adhesive. There could be a, an issue with the transfer. It could be not having your press plugged into a correct outlet or you don't have the correct heating element, which can also interfere with time, temperature, and pressure, which I call the recipe for success when it comes to decoration. So I, I really wanna show you what these products um, look like once the transfer has been applied, because I've got two different 
sets. I've got the original that Dane had without doing the half tones and then the half tone, because I think it's really important to visually see what you can do with artwork. Now, the other component to that is the feel. I know Jay already had Dane try to, you know, to touch and feel the transfer through the camera, um, but I'm going to do my best to show you the movement of the transfer because um, when it's on your body, you're not always touching your logo, but you can feel what it feels like as your body moves throughout the day. So the first one I'm going to show you is the comparison and the two transfers. We've got, this is what we finished with. So you can see if I put my hand behind the transfer, it's going to change. Um, you can see the skin color come through, but we also have a lot of negative space, which is going to feel really great on that garment. And I know this isn't anything new. They've already spoiled it and showed you what it looked like on the garment, but it's okay. They took my thunder. Oh, sorry, sorry about that, Kelly. I wow, did not do sorry, that. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'll pivot. Um, and then this is what the transfer looks like as a solid. Now, yes, you've got more color in this and it gives you the ability to pretty much put this transfer on any type of t-shirt without changing the transfer. But side by side, you can just see that this is already going to feel so much better, right? Now, the beautiful thing is they're gonna apply the same when it comes to the heat press. It's the same time temperature pressure. So it doesn't matter if you're doing 50 of these and 50 of these, you don't have to change anything when it comes to the application. And that's one thing I absolutely love about heat press. Okay, so here's what the transfer looks like on the half tone. And yes, it is on this uh, kind of bone colored t-shirt in terms of garment this is a really popular color right now out there in the industry but cool. i want to show you what it's going to look like as we go from this color to applying it on a red hoodie so we're going to do several different locations i'm going to show you a couple of different types of heat transfer material um, if we have time i will do a mixed media look um, but at the end of the day, what I really want to show you is that I'm using three, four different types of materials, one heat press, and um, fingers crossed, I'm only going to use two different platens. And then we'll actually get into a little bit more of the platens that I'm using so you can understand why Hottronics is really going to be the one-stop shop when it comes to a heat press. Okay, so we're going to be printing on the back of this. So I am threading my garment. If you are new to heat printing, then threading is just opening it like a pillowcase. And because our presses have the threadability factor, we are able to only print on one side of the garment. We don't have to worry about folding it and getting a crease under the bottom or creasing our transfer simply because uh, we don't have the ability to separate the two layers. Now I do have a beautiful line down the middle and I'm a perfectionist. So we're going to preheat this garment. That way we have a nice smooth print surface. Plus I'm checking my time and my pressure as we are using this next transfer. So I'm at a six, which is medium pressure for Hottronics, but I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit. So here's our half tone transfer. I am finding the middle of it because if you look at this, I don't, I don't know what the middle is. Yeah, thanks, There's Dave. A lot going that on. was kind of a struggle for me too, Kelly. I'm glad that the professionals... asymmetry, baby, asymmetry is always fun. <sighs> I love, and I love that. But so on something like this, how do we find the middle? Well, because we do have the badge in the center, what I'm doing is just matching up those edges, creasing the top, not the transfer inks. And then now I've got the center of the transfer. So I'm going to take that. And I am going to go, let's go a little bit closer. For the back, I like to go about my palm size. Now my palm size is going to be different than your palm size, which is going to be different than, you know, your friends. So my best recommendation is yes, there are guides out there to tell you how many inches to go from the neckline, the seam, whatever. 
I think it's best to find it out by experience. So do a couple, do three inches, do five inches and see what you like on the back of that garment because each size of artwork is going to be different and the way it lays on me, say versus J, is also going to be different. So experiment with that and do not be afraid to ruin a garment because you don't know what you don't know until you have to figure it out. So here we go. Now this is a hot prep or a hot peel, which I love. This is going to cook for 12 seconds. Um, Jay, what is the time, temperature, and pressure for what people can print? We we definitely want to have a range. We're going to say 12 to 15 seconds for the hot peel, 300 to 320 degrees, depending on the garment, and also light to medium pressure, depending on the garment. Cool. So with this, I'm at 290, so um, need to be a little bit higher, but the other transfers I'm going to be using are at 290. I can easily kick this up to 300 degrees and know that I am at 300 degrees because I have a temperature readout right here. So if you are working with something that has high, low, medium temp, you're gonna have to constantly watch that because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation. And if you are like me, I think following a recipe is extremely important, especially for quality. 100%, 100%. And part of the recipe, wait, is that you're gonna heat press that one more time. So we have a 10 second post peel. And that's especially important with things like hoodies and sweatshirts to make sure, because as you know, Kelly, sometimes the weave of that material, we just wanna give it a second kiss 10 seconds, eight seconds even, I've experimented, same temperature, same pressure, um, and because it's going into the wash, nobody follows the directions for washing. They put it in a hot wash, they put it in a hot dryer. So for yep. those of you who in the chat who's saying, yeah, but I'm worried about how long this DTF will press. If you give it that second press for eight to 10 seconds, I know that's more production, uh, but tell me, tell me after 60 washes, which is the fast test wash that I did, and I saw zero degradation, no peeling, no change in the artwork at all. So I think it's it's really funny that our conversation is, well, at least in my world, is all about seconds and six seconds compared to 12 seconds. Uh, oh my gosh, it's 12 seconds. It's 12 seconds, right? So if you have to <laughs> apply something for 20 seconds, that gives you 20 seconds to prep the other garment or you know run around and go turn something off or cut the transfer. There's There's time that gives you the ability to keep moving in your business and be productive just because you have to go again. So I, I am like, guys, it's 20 seconds. It's fine. It'll be fine. Right. And, and if that were like a, a, a polyester tote bag or something that you're not going to be washing, one press would have been fine. We, no one would have ever known, right? But just because we live in a world where customers can sometimes be, what's the word we say, Dane? Um, particular. Oh, I'm not going there. Uh-uh. You oh. ain't dragging me into this oh, okay. one. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes customers are particular um, and obviously <laughs> kidding aside, we want to make sure that the image that we've done all this work to get to this right. point, that the image stays on the garment. So that second press for eight to 10 seconds is going to be the key. Keeping the integrity of the art, right? Dane spent so much time creating this beautiful image. So we want to make sure that that image is nicely applied onto the sweatshirt. So here's what it looks like. I will also say that it gives it a little bit of an um, extra mattified tone or mm -hmm. look. The, the sheen's removed a little bit more when you go for that second press. So for those of you that are particular or have customers that say, you know what, I don't want any sheen in my transfer. Well, that second application, that second press for um, a tiny eight to 10 seconds is going to give you that effect. So looks great. I'm gonna do my best to show you the movement of this, right? So it moves really, really well. And even I, when I- I can't hear garment, any crunchy, Kelly. I can't hear any <laughs> crunchy. No, no crunch. No, no, no crunch. No cereal sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, right? This was the um, half tone where this, this is going to be bright, is Ooh. the full on a safety. So we can hear it. I can hear bit, it. Can you guys? Bit. Yeah, just a touch. So, and then as you see, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't move like the way the other one did. So just imagine somebody wearing this, especially for the fire department, if they are extremely active, 
then you wanna be able to have as much movement and breathability in that garment as possible. So let's pivot back really fast. This is the full color solid design that's on safety green. The design doesn't change. We've got a heather gray. Ooh, so cool. this one pops just a little bit more. And then we've got this tonal effect with this cherry red, but our colors still pop out. So same design, three different shirts. And I really feel like the, the logo kind of just kind of have a little bit of contrast. Sometimes it makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it's, it's easy, right? You can print that, print it on whatever shirt and you don't have to worry about it. But with what Dane was able to do, the print pops out a little bit more on this, or we've created that, what I feel like is a little bit more of a vintage, softer hand, that washed look that is extremely popular with concert tees um, and any other graphic shirts that you can see in retail. And just because this is a fire department does not mean that you cannot follow some of those retail trends as long as that is what the customer is wanting. Great point. So, we have used those logos. Now, how can we make these garments stand out just a little bit more by adding dimension, using tonal um, prints, and then we're going to use a little bit of metallic as well. So our earlier, you mean, but I wait, there's more. Prints. You're um, you're gonna you're gonna go uh, more. You're gonna more. go deeper. You're gonna get look at that. I'll always, this uh, education is fun, right? Learning. Yes. Everybody should learn. So That's I right. printed metallic earlier, and this was a cold peel. Oh, very cool. Look at that. Um, I don't Captain, know if I'm on the... Captain Clement. Yeah, we can see it. It's right on the, uh, by the hoodie. What do you okay. call the pocket? Yes, I'll show you. Okay. I didn't know if I was big or not. Okay. So, you see that? Oh, now I see it. Yes, yes. Very cool. With our um, CAD Cut Soft Foam. So, this is a raised product. Um, think of puff, but not puff. So you're going to get some dimension. You're going to get some shadow effect. But what I love is that we actually took this tonal versus having a contrast color. So when the person is wearing this, we're not focusing on the front. This is highlighted a little bit. Maybe metallic gold isn't for them, but I really wanted to kind of have this um, badge effect with the metallic gold. And then the main character, Right, the main actor is on right. the back of this, really standing out. So we're staying in that trendy, we're staying in kind of that grunge look, the tonal, but this is both masculine and feminine, right? I would wear this absolutely. Um, but the cool thing, this has some texture to it, but it's very, very soft and it's not crunchy. <laughs> and it still moves very well. Kelly, I love that. I love, 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 love it. What is that product called? Is that a Stalls product, a transfer press yeah, product? Yeah, so this is a Stalls product. This is CAD Cut Soft Foam. Um, this is something I just cut with my plotter. Uh, you know, when, when I said, hey, this is what we're going to do, I cut it here. So this is something, if you have a plotter, you can easily cut this in-house or um, you can find other businesses that will cut for you. We've got some decorators that we can recommend. Uh, soft foam, though, I believe is in services. I'd have to just double check. Okay. There's only a couple of products that we do not offer in services where we will cut the product for you and send it to you ready to apply. Uh, such a neat effect. Love it. Thank you for okay, sharing. Okay, so that. what are we doing more to this? We're going to decorate on the sleeve. And staying in that tonal, we're going to use that CAD cut soft foam. So I'm going to show you how to apply this. Um, obviously, we personalize this, uh, but it gives you the ability. This is something you could do with direct to film is do the personalization, change it per station, change per name, um, and put this on a garment very, very easily. So I'm going to use a printing pillow. I'm going to stick it in the sleeve. And what this is going to do is remove this seam from giving, giving us a crease on top. So we have a nice, even pressure. 
I'm going to take my station 45, make sure I've got it going the right direction. But the first thing I'm gonna do is pre-press and make sure my pressure is correct. So right now, this is really, really firm pressure and with CAD cut soft foam, we need light pressure. So right here over the center is our pressure gauge and this gives us really nice and even pressure simply by adjusting this knob. Okay, I'm at a two. Just apply right there. I'm gonna throw a cover sheet over to protect our heating element and the garment. And then we're gonna let that cook for about 12 seconds when this automatically pops open. So this is an auto plan. What that means is when this timer is done going off, voila. Ta -da. I call it the set it and forget it key press. Um, other presses without having to use an air compressor. So our uh, Hotronics air fusion, um, dual air fusion, all of those take an air compressor to automate that opening and closing aspect of the heating, the heat press. With the auto clam, it has the ability to just pop open. Um, and you know what, if you had to go run somewhere, then you know that this is going to automatically open without overcooking or burning or melting any material that is underneath it. Let's see if I can get up close and personal. So easy peasy, you guys can see that dimension. Yeah, that's such a cool look. So without taking away the really cool design, now we've got front, we've got sleeve, and we even have a small little side pouch just to give some classification for that captain. Okay, next up. This one, we did a left chest in just white with the captain. It's very, very minimal. Um, you know what? You could do this in direct to film. You could do red. You can match it. You could even take direct to film and put it on top of the soft foam. So if you want to create Ooh, a layer I was just kind of dimensional badge look without ordering emblems, then you can do that in house as well. So what we are going to do is apply it to the sleeve. The majority of our hot tronic presses have interchangeable platens. So there's a little lever right here on the side that I just moved. I'm going to pop this off. And I am going to get this little four by six platen. Lock that lever. And now I have been um, able to change the platen without using any screws, taking you know lots of minutes or hours to adjust what I need to. And instead of trying to figure out how I was going to get that sleeve on that platen, now all I have to do is open it, still thread, and I can easily decorate the sleeve. So going to dimension, we are going to take the product that we used first, which is soft foam. So we're gonna use black for this. And then we're going to layer gold, which is pad cut metallic in gold on top. This will be laid nicer once we actually apply it, but we're gonna have this kind of a metallic raised emblem look. Like I said, you could take direct to film and put it on top, to, uh, on top of soft foam. So if you wanted to do something simple, you could change the personalization by color, or you could just keep it nice and clean and do uh, black and white. We're gonna go extra today and do that black and gold. Now, um, you saw that go down extremely fast because we changed the flatten. We need to change our pressure. So I'm gonna adjust that. We still wanna use a light pressure for our soft foam. Instead of waiting the full 12 seconds, that's why I'm whacking the top of this handle. And we should be good to go. Now, typically with any type of mixed media, the first layer you would tack down for about three to five seconds just to get that adhesive activated onto the garment. That way you don't have any shrinkage in the material and you aren't overheating the adhesive of that transfer. 
For soft foam, because of the thickness, it is going to apply for the full 12 seconds. We will peel and then we'll apply the metallic for the full 12 seconds as well. Dimensional products are huge. Right now in our industry, we're seeing a lot of texture, a lot of puff. Uh, soft foam kind of has this soft suede like uh, feeling. And for those of you, when you were kids, you played with those foam squares that you could get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels and make picture frames or your kids coming home with a star. That's exactly what it feels like. So it's very, very, very soft. All right, so we peeled that carrier and now we're gonna go in with that metallic. Putting my cover sheet back on, full 12 seconds. Now the difference is CAD cut metallic is a cold peel. So in terms of production, as Jay is saying, that press has to heat for another eight seconds if you're using direct to film. At that time, you could go and cold peel all of those transfers that are sitting aside. So before I show you, this is what it looks like complete and we will remove that carrier in just a little bit. But you can also use something like metallic silver. And then Fashion Film Electric has this really cool uh, diamond plate type of material. I call it diamond plate because it's just what I feel like is in the bed of a truck. But it gives you a little bit of that rugged look, uh, but also giving you that same metallic uh, characteristic. Um, okay, so let's talk about really quick. The, the things you need to know, right? The warranty information, that is something we are always, always asked about. The heating element has a lifetime warranty. The framework has five years, a circuit board is two and parts and labor has one. So knowing this has a lifetime warranty tells you right there that we have um, a lot of faith in this heating element and we know what it is capable of. Last but not least is there are a ton of inter interchangeable platens. You've only seen two that I have used, but um, I believe there's like 10 to 12 and we're always developing new platens out there to just decorate on shoes, decorate on legs. Um, there is an underbill platen, which gives you the ability to decorate on the bill, the underside of a hat. Um, and then of course, those small platens to help you really decorate bags. Okay, let's see this cool down. And so metallic is one of my favorites to work with. Feels like butter. And now we have this. Wow, very cool. cool. So captain, without ordering extra, Captain Clement, did you, did you have a Captain <laughs> Clement in there? That's the one we were really I know, for. I should have done that. Uh, Dang it. Okay. Uh, so. We're using several different products to really kind of build that full color capability like direct to film is going to give you, but then add in that dimension and it really just takes uh, those designs and, and little little things like personalization to the next level. Awesome. Any questions? A, a hundred questions, but we don't have too <laughs> many times. Um, I just really want to say thank you, Kelly. Your, your explanation, your attention to detail, your willingness to go the extra mile and do these extra accessories. I, I want people to know I'm a student of the game. I'm over here taking notes too. So, um, you know, Kelly's using terms and, and showing us not just what to do, but why and, and the textures, things like tone on tone, things that are seen in the retail. I know you have a great eye for detail. I know you like to get your shopping game on. And so we rely on right. people like you to tell us, because we're guys and we're not very good at this, um, to know what is in style, what is in trend, what is on point. So thank you for taking that extra time. The multiple locations were awesome. Um, I'm kind of now in love with that soft foam and, and really want to order some in and play with it because the tone on tone thing looks uh -huh. so cool. And you blew my mind when you said we could do DTF on it. So Tara, you know what's going to happen. So <laughs> anyway. Yes, so Jake, I will tell you. The big experiment. <laughs> to keep your mind getting blown, you can actually layer foam on foam. So imagine going foam on foam with direct foam. I know. It's one of my favorite products. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. As you can tell, I'm always up for a good time hanging out with my friends. But Kelly Walters, you are a dynamo. We're so glad that you were able to give us these resources. 
For those who did not know, you should know, and that's on us, but Equipment Zone is a dealer or a reseller, or we are all in with the stalls lineup of hot Toronto Expresses and love them. And Terry can attest, we, we've, people ask us for them all the time. Terry, you just had a customer. What were you just telling me about the, he has the dual, uh, what's it called? I don't even, forgive me the guys. Dual pneumatic, uh, uh, he, Preston Kelly, you could probably tell us exactly what it's called, but uh, he said it was the greatest investment he's ever made. <laughs> yeah. So whether, whether it's your first press or a second press or whether it's my favorite, the, you know, the 360 IQ hat press, all of them are so well built and, and just an amazing uh, production tool. We, we're, we're fans, first of all, and we use these tools ourselves here in the shop. So Kelly, thank you for your time. Dane, none of this would have worked without you at the helm, moving those pixels and, and freaking out about these dots, you and I together. I think we've, maybe, <laughs> maybe we've crossed the bridge. Maybe we've still got work to do. I'm not sure yet, but I'm so grateful for the time that you took to uh, modify the artwork and give us that lesson. That half hour is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. So thank you very, very much. Anytime. It's fun. Always. So Terry, I'm going to kick it to you. Is there anything else we should do before we say goodbye? And thank you, Terry and Roy, for being involved here on our side um, and being in the chat. But Terry, usually we just let you kind of close us out. So I'm going to do that yeah. today. We, um, we, Roy and I have been over here trying to answer chat questions. If you have questions afterwards, just reach out to equipmentzone.com and uh, we're happy to answer any questions you have. And uh, again, thanks to, to everybody involved. Sorry, Kelly, that you had to stand there and wait for an hour to <laughs> start it out there in Overland Park. <laughs> so, but uh, but thanks everybody for, for joining us today and this will be posted on YouTube in just a couple of days. I do have a quick question, Jay. I'm seeing yes. several questions about material. Would you like them to filter the questions through you and then you reach out to me or how would you like that? Because I don't want to leave some people. Oh, hanging. no. Excellent. Excellent. Let's, so let's make it clear for everybody. So I'm going to save the chat and I will send it to you and we will make sure that we can link this up. So those cool. folks like Sandy's asking about, you know, specifics and times and things like that. So I want to make sure that they can link to you. You are the expert in that field. And same Dane, if somebody, I noticed there were a couple of very specific uh, Photoshop questions that are way, way, way over my head. You don't want me anywhere near those answers. So Got I'm going to see if I can't make sure that these folks get with you guys and then they can get their answers ASAP. Cool. And thanks to our audience. There were uh, so many folks that registered for this. Um, you know, and, and watch live. So obviously they took the time there. The topic is hot and the trainers were awesome. Uh, specifically you guys, uh, I didn't do any training. I was just moderating and thank God. So um, that's it for today. We appreciate everybody at Equipment Zone, everybody from Stalls and Hottronics. And until we see you again at another educational event like this, um, all of our training is on our YouTube channel. So please, please go check it out and subscribe there. Um, or we look forward to seeing you upcoming trade shows. Um, at the time this airs right now, we are in the end of August, so we're gearing up for a few shows um, for fall and already planning for 2024. Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. Crazy. Anyway, yep. Kelly and Dane, thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.